you don't turn the fucking setting off. Yeah, we can all. Our intent has to be on clear communication, y'all. I know the air element's been weird, but our intent has to be on clear communication, okay? I know you can comment that it's glitching, but stop speaking that into existence. Our intent has to be on clear communication, I'm telling y'all. I hope y'all know what I'm saying. like, Because I've got the transits for this full moon. We need to really understand the lunar cycle before we really get to this full moon, okay? So the thing is, yes, it's clear. That's what I'm saying. Y'all, we need to literally keep the intent on clear communication. Don't even think the thought that it's lagging or frozen. It's clear communication. You know what I'm saying? The air element. Clear the air. I don't want y'all putting any lag in the cloud. You get what I'm saying? So yeah, clear communication. We all need to keep that intent together. Yes. See how much better it is? That's what I'm telling y'all. We have to keep our intent clear. Or our intentions won't manifest, period. There we go. You see what I'm saying? Am I right or am I wrong? Shit, man. Yeah. It's like Blu-ray quality now. That's what I'm fucking talking about. Yeah, buddy. So mode and motherfucking B. Yeah. <laughs> Real shit. So, hey. This is the full moon in Pisces, opposite the sun in Virgo, 28 degrees. This hat's on my uh, website, link in bio. Can feel the crispness, dude. Yeah, so much scattered energy in the last one. So, I literally had to get off and then clean my fucking room. And then clean my fucking mind. But hey, we're good. We made it back. So look, the full moon is the end of the lunar cycle where the sun is directly opposite the moon. So when you look up in the sky, you're going to see a full moon. It's going to be full and bright. So again, y'all, we need to understand the principle of correspondence or astrology does a, just doesn't make any fucking sense. As above, so below, everything's energy. So the same reason that you can be on this planet and just vibrate on a frequency, it somehow correlates to the frequencies and vibrations out in outer space. Okay? That's why we need to look in at astrology and see what the fuck's going on. You get what I'm saying? Y'all feel me? So, hey, every planet in our solar system corresponds to a planet within your energy body, okay? Because these are external things you can look at, but you got to understand that the planets are internal as well. So when we talk about our sun, this represents our solar plexus chakra, the center of our body. Same reason that the sun is the center of our solar system. That's where your sun is. So when you get to the moon, the other luminary, this is where your moon is. It's your heart chakra. The center of your care is your mood. So, hey, full moon is happening. When the moon's full, we should be fulfilled, emotionally speaking. I said this in the last live, but it was chopping and shit. But, hey, y'all should be drinking some water. Make sure you hydrate because it's a lot of processing, a lot of emotions coming up to the surface. You're mostly a water being, you know, so you got to clear that shit out. If you're getting headaches, inflammation or whatever, drink some motherfucking water. You'll feel so much better. Yeah. Yeah, real shit. We haven't even gotten to the fucking transit, so y'all already learning a lot. Yeah, drink some water. I'm going to drink some water so y'all can't say that I'm just preaching at you. I'm, I do this. I've been drinking water probably since the day I was fucking born. We got a lot of interesting transits for this full moon. Okay. So the thing is, we need to understand that whatever constellation the moon's transiting through, whenever it's a full moon, this part of our life is going to be fulfilled in some way, shape or form. So what this means, guys, is to take in new energy, we have to get rid of some old energy. That's why full moons are about releasing, right? Yeah, you can drink alkaline water. I got the damn, uh, I got the damn, uh, green adventuring in there also so yeah to take on new energy we have to remove some energy because it's the full moon so i'm gonna break down the transits and i'm gonna break down all the house positions so we can see where the fuck this is going on and what you're gonna need to remove or try to add some more fulfillment towards okay right working with the celestial bodies progresses us further that's goddamn right you're absolutely right about that so hey y'all this is the sun in virgo pardon me and then the Full moon in Pisces, because this is an opposition. So when the sun's in Virgo, this is again is our solar plexus. So we're all paying attention to the mutable earth element. Criticizing, compromising, inventing, organizing our earth resources. Working on our habits, working on our health. Trying to clean, trying to make sure things are practical and making sense is what the Virgo element's about. But the moon, the mood, the theme of this full moon on Monday, the 20th, 
This is going to be our emotions, our mutable water, our imagination, our creativity, dreams, or fantasies. So, yo, the theme of this full moon is fulfilled or unfulfilled dreams because this is the Pisces constellation. So, I don't give a damn what anybody has to say on spiritual TikTok because I do this shit, man. This is a good ass time to manifest your motherfucking dreams. I don't give a fuck that it's not a new moon. Try it out. <laughs> shit, man. You don't need to, like, hear it from somebody on the internet. You can go outside and fucking touch the stars, you know? And this is the fucking Neptune constellation, man. It's time to goddamn will in your motherfucking dreams, man. If you're feeling any shape or form of unfulfillment, that's the shit that we release this time in a couple days, okay? And you can work on it today. Do you guys get what I'm saying? It's the harvest. Do you guys feel me before I start breaking down the transits? Because... This is the theme. This is what it's about. Yeah, sweet. We're going to get into all that because it really just depends on who you are and what your natal chart is like. Okay, sweet. I'm glad y'all feel me. So, hey, we got some interesting things in the sky when it comes down to this new moon. Because not only does the moon kind of show us what cycle we're entering based on new or full, but hey, I say I may just post this to YouTube for real. But the transits in the sky, aspecting the moon, aspecting the sun, aspecting all the other planets is going to show you what the hell's going to go on. Because it's more than just the sun and the moon, right? A lot of energy, a lot of action, a lot of willpower from different planets, okay? Yeah. Real shit. <laughs> okay, sweet. I'll post it on YouTube. Sweet. And I was thinking, dude, I'm going to probably do this more regularly. I just have way more of you guys on TikTok than I do on YouTube. So I'm trying to get y'all over there to like hit my profile, hit the Instagram button. And then um, follow that YouTube, you know, because YouTube also, <laughs> damn, I'm not going to repeat that because I am going to re-upload it, <laughs> but fucking um, YouTube uploads in better clarity. So yeah, we're going <laughs> to, bruh, <laughs> fucking distracting, man. So yo, <laughs> bruh, <laughs> all right, we're going to keep the communication clear and focused. And shout out to y'all subscribing to my YouTube. I really fucking appreciate it. It's so wild. I've been on YouTube for so long. And then after I got onto TikTok, my platform went up like over four or five times. So yeah, tap in y'all. Tap in y'all. So hey. These are tarot cards. He, him. This is a ritual in some way, shape, or form. Everything you do is um a ritual. Every act is a magical act. So hey y'all, let's talk about the... Transits that we're all going to experience during this full moon, okay, come Monday on the 20th, full moon in Pisces. So, hey, the theme is, so again, before we even talk about the transits, we need to understand the sun is two degrees away from the Libra constellation. So we're going from being criticism and organizing and practical and trying to really get precise to just chilling the fuck out, going to the Libra constellation and finding peace, balance, compromise, relatability, chilling the fuck out in some way shape or form going to a lighter element going from earth to air to a higher frequency and that's pretty sweet so you need to understand that's kind of the way we're going before we even break down the transits so check it out fulfilled slash unfulfilled dreams so the first thing we got is that sun opposite the moon fulfilled or unfulfilled dreams you're going to find out exactly what the fuck is fulfilled or unfulfilled once we get to the house positions we start looking at where this moon is going to hit your chart so hey we got the sun trying pluto so this is the gift of seeing our transformation. So you want to use this gift to take action, sun, on the transformation that you need to do. This may be scary. I was actually born during Sun Trine Pluto. So the thing is, this vision, this sun as aspect can sometimes be motherfucking scary because you have a pretty big awareness of the things that need to be done with Pluto and Capricorn. The practical common sense advice for how to transform your life. And some of y'all, here's the thing about a trine, man. That sounds awesome because we got that 120 degree angle. But if you don't do shit with the trine, it doesn't matter. You don't have to fucking use the trine. Pluto's scary. Some of y'all aren't ready for Pluto. So Pluto might transform some shit for you. It is what it is. But hey, we got the gift of seeing our transformation. I do want to say really quick, actually, think about this, y'all. So the moon is going to hit full at 28 degrees. Neptune is at 21 degrees Pisces. So before we have this full moon moment, the moon is going to cross Neptune that same day. So it is moon conjunct Neptune, even though at the moment of full moon, the orb is going to be so wide, you wouldn't consider it that. 
But keep in mind, the moon is like our emotional body and our trigger point. So whenever we have the moon cross over any planet, you feel that in your body. So this is feeling your dreams or illusions very strongly. So again, pay the fuck attention to what you react and respond to or what you're feeling about, because that's going to show you the fulfillment slash unfulfillment. It's really important to pay attention to your emotions, any moon, but especially in water signs, because this is water connection and feeling. Okay. So, hey, the moon's lit, y'all. It's our satellite. It's our closest body. So we got to pay the fuck attention because you can feel it in your body. You know, your moon is your mood. Same way you can like watch the moon pull the tides of the ocean. You're over 70% water. It's going to pull your emotions around. You know, this time in space, the moon has been waxing. It's filling up. If you go outside right now, it's almost completely full. So quite literally, like I'm saying, man, for us to take in more emotions, more feelings, we have to let some emotions out. If you need to find your sun, moon and rising, click the link in my bio and go get a free natal chart. Real shit. Or just look up natal chart. You can get one for free. So, hey, we got the gift of seeing our transformation with the sunshine Pluto. We've got Chiron in conjunct Venus. So this is not understanding our mistakes when it comes down to pleasures and indulgences. We got Chiron in Aries, Venus in Scorpio. So Venus is in the sunken place right now in Scorpio. She's debilitated. She's relating to and reacting to and getting pleased and finding joy in deep water, fixed water, emotions, obsession. So the thing is, you might correlate Venus to your love matters and your relationships, and that's true. But the thing is, this may manifest in some of y'all's addictions and just emotional habits because we're still in that Virgo season. So you might even be paying attention to the habits. It may be the other thing I was saying. But with Chiron, this is our integration to the outer planets. So we need to be paying attention to our motherfucking mistakes. But that being said, it may be kind of hard with this 150 degree angle between these two planets. So if you're paying attention to learn from your addictions, pleasures, and indulgences, you're going to make this in conjunction a lot easier for yourself and be able to integrate through your habits as an, as a positive impact, or will it just enhance them? I was going to say, dude, it's really up to you. These are the transits we're going to experience. What you do with it is what you do with it. I'm not here to, um, disempower any of y'all. This is literally just what's going to happen in the future. So you can use this energy or you don't have to either way. It's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like if you were deaf and the tree fell down in the forest, it would still reverberate and make sound even if you weren't consciously aware of it, you know? It really would. The cats are on the desk, man. I'm not moving them right now. <laughs> They're gonna stay here today. I'm gonna use my willpower to not touch the fucking cats for once. Yeah, use it or abuse it. It's up to you, man. You need to treat this solar system like your bitch, man. I've been telling y'all, I'm higher than Pluto. I am pretty attached to my existence and connected to being who I am, but I don't really give a fuck about this earth plane, man. I do, but I don't. I love it here, but hey, yeah. So, hey, pay attention to your pleasures and indulgences so you can see when you're holding yourself back or making mistakes with Chiron in conjunct Venus and Scorpio. So we also got Mercury square Pluto. Mercury in Libra square Pluto in Capricorn. So this is the pressure with the square, the 90 degree angle to transform ourselves mentally. So also, yeah, that's right, y'all. I'm telling you, we got that fucking clear communication. Real shit. So the thing is, we also got Mars and Libra at this time, feeling righteous and trying to go to war for others. So you want to be realistic with the way that you make changes right now, because this is a lot of pressure. Pressure can bust your shit up or it can make a diamond out of you. So don't try to do too much when it comes down to making mental transformation. Saturn, Capricorn is going to remind you all the fucking time that everything takes time. Slow the fuck down, you know, especially with the Chiron transits and the Chiron retrograde. You know, if you're doing the shadow work, don't expect yourself to fix in one day, what you've been doing for like months and months and years, you know, it just doesn't make sense. So you have that pressure to transform through the mind. So make sure you're nice to yourself through your mind rather than being your own worst fucking enemy. You know what I'm saying? We got, <laughs> bruh, there's a million reasons why you'd be exhausted right now. For real. How do we make sure we are taking advantage of this energy? By paying attention to what I say, listening to it, and then knowing where it falls in your houses so you can do something about it. Yeah, let the pressure shape you. You get what I'm saying? Y'all fucking with it or not? <laughs> yeah. So, hey, this is really good stuff, and I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. I was going to say, dude, I literally, I've been told by so many of y'all to make podcasts and stuff, and I would just rather break down the transits and stuff, you know, and then tap in intermittently, you know, and make sure that we're all on the same page. It'd be super fucking sweet. 
So, hey, we got the pressure to make mental transformations. So we just got to make it make sense because these are two cardinal signs. That's why it's a square. We got Libra versus Capricorn. So we're taking our air element and trying to connect it to the earth element, a.k.a. make it make sense. This is very logical left brain. So make it make motherfucking sense. Once you stop um, honoring your limits or the world's limits, you're going to find yourself in a full fucking moon scenario, death and rebirth in some way, shape or form, because it's Pluto. You get what I'm saying? It's Pluto. So yeah, can be <laughs> yeah. Real shit. So hey, we got the moon sextile Pluto. So these are opportunities to react to our evolution and transformation. You'll feel like doing it. But again, because we're talking about Capricorn Pluto, seeing Saturn in reality for what it is, because not every opportunity is the one that you're gonna need to take. Okay? And your moon sign. It's going to kind of show you how you make reactions and responses. So, yo, if it's a Pisces moon, if you're a mother effing Virgo moon or a Gemini moon or a Sagittarius moon, this may be a more rough time for you than other people just because you're by default going to be at square opposite energy of this full moon energy. So just make sure you're paying attention to your dreams and imagination because everybody's going to be in La La Land or Neptune in some way, shape or form. This is really like deep water, y'all. So just make sure you're paying the fuck attention to what's going on. And I say this like, cause this is the cool thing, man. A lot of y'all, this is a matter of opinion what I'm about to say, but Virgo is one of the most spiritual signs there is. And we're going through the last degrees of the Virgo constellation. Virgo is ruled by Chiron. It's the first outer planet, focus in time and space. So the thing is Virgo understands mutable earth and being precisely invested into details because through the principle of correspondence, all these details are spiritual. So I don't care what the fuck you're paying attention to physically when this full moon rolls around. I hope you're adding attention to your manifestations in the astral plane. I hope y'all fucking hear me because some of y'all, I swear you don't hear me. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if you're looking at a job. I don't care if you're at your nine to five. I want you to add emotional weight to your manifestations and dreams because you might want to be like the boss and run your own business. But let's say you got to clock the fuck in and work on the full moon. I want you to literally create as many feelings of fulfillment as you can to will that fucking circumstance into existence over time. The universe is paying attention to you. What you pay for when it comes to your thoughts, feelings, action, and intentions, you know? That's what it is, y'all. This shit's motherfucking simple. The moment that you think it's not, you can start to place, ext place astrology externally and further from you. Yeah, you can look at this shit outside, but you need to understand this solar system is within you. It's inside of you. Shout out to all of y'all. Shout out to the Virgo sons. Y'all are the Virgo ones that we're celebrating right now. Pull it in, act with intention. Program your environment. Direct your energy. That's what I'm talking about. So, hey, moon sextile Pluto. These are the opportunities to react and respond to our evolution and transformation. So some of the things that you may be scared to do, you may feel like it's time to react and do it today or two days from now when the full moon is sextile Pluto. And that's pretty powerful. But again, it's Capricorn energy. Make it make sense. Do the practical things, the Virgo things that you know are going to benefit you and you won't go wrong. Because sometimes with Saturn energy, you're going to get busted the fuck up whenever you put too much dip on your chip or don't honor the reality or yourself and your limits. Okay. Very important. So, hey, a sextile is a 60 degree angle. And I want to say right quick, y'all, if you don't have any idea what the hell I'm talking about, click the link in my bio and go grab my book or my audiobook, or my course, or a natal chart reading, I'll break it all down for you, man. You're talking to the wizard right here. So tap the fuck in. Hit the link in my bio or go to simplifiedastrology.com. So hey, we got Jupiter, Trine, Mercury. Jupiter in Aquarius, Mercury in Libra. So that's pretty cool. This is the gift of communicating our philosophies, our ideals, or expansion. But this being said, man, this is air on air. And Jupiter is flunked out in Aquarius, man. Jupiter is debilitated in Aquarius. So make sure that just because you think you understand what the fuck you're going on or what's going on with you, that you're not preachy. And like, preachy is the best word. Like, just because you understand something, it's Jupiter and Aquarius, man. We need to understand the group and the collective. So just because you understand your circumstance doesn't mean that you can prejudge and make assumptions about other people's understanding. That's, that's not how to use this trine. I'm telling you. It's not, you know, you want to listen because when we're talking about clear communication with that white ass candle and all this air element, we need to understand communication is a two way process, communicating, speaking, verbalizing, and then listening. Listening is like damn near, bro. Why do you think you got two ears and one mouth? Listening is so damn important. So again, Jupiter, y'all should know this helps us extract wisdom and knowledge out of our experiences and then 
Mercury is how we think and communicate and analyze with our left brain. And Jupiter and Aquarius is going to try to extract all this wisdom and deeper meanings behind the things that everybody is going through. And you might be right, but again, dude, like when you conversations and try to express your understanding, you want to dialogue with people. You don't want to monologue or preach to them or just like try to impose your understanding because shit, man, you got a lot to learn from other people. And I got a lot to learn from y'all. I hope you understand. I'm in this energy too. Like I learned so much from y'all all the time when I get on here. I do rituals every day, my friend. So you bet your ass I do rituals on the full moon. <laughs> you better believe it. You better believe it. So, hey, we got Saturn square Venus. So this is not seeing the reality of our love matters because Saturn is the planet of reality, boundaries, limits, and restrictions. And Venus is our planet of pleasure, indulgence, and joy. And you know Venus is debilitated in Scorpio. This is a square. We got fixed signs, air versus water. So the thing is, shit, man, <laughs> it's so fucking funny, dude. You got to be responsible in your relationships and just make them make sense. Again, this is the theme of fulfillment or unfulfillment. So pay the fuck attention to what's going on with your love matters, you know, because with Venus going through Scorpio, we may be more inclined to just compromise or overindulge with things just for the sake of not being lonely or being partnered, being connected with people. You know, this could be your lovers. It could be your motherfucking friends. So watch the fuck out when we got Saturn square Venus. Okay. Because again, dude, you can literally fuck up your boundaries, your Saturn, just because you want to be in pleasure or indulging in something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It could be your lover or it could be, again, addictions and escapism and fixed water in some way, shape or form. Pluto, whatever the fuck's got you obsessed, you know? I know what's got me obsessed, so I'm just going to keep on obsessing over that. Yeah. You're a loner, so you don't got to worry. <laughs> I was say you just gotta work you no one has to worry worry is the wrong word but you should watch your habits then if it's not a person watch your habits you know because venus is what you're willing to indulge in not just people right so hey we got mars trying saturn and this is mars and libra and this is so funny y'all we got so many retrograde planets and so many debilitated planets so fucking funny, man. Mars is flunked out in Libra as well because it's home in Aries. So it's 180 degrees opposite. It's like, what the fuck am I doing here? It's like, I'm going to take my passions and fight for other people. And we got this trying to Saturn, this gift of seeing the reality of our passions or the gift of taking responsibility for your passions. So again, dude, just because this is the, <laughs> I got to break down Mars and Libra because it's debilitated. So just because we're passionately invested into something that we think is fair or balanced or relatable doesn't mean it's the right thing to do with reality, you know? Chances are with this trying, you'll make it make more sense, but again, dude, just because you think you're morally just doesn't mean that you're righteous cuz you can be so damn right that you're wrong. Is what I want y'all to understand. I think you get what I'm saying. But yeah, just cuz things are comfortable or they make sense to your ideals, your logic, your cardinal air doesn't mean it's cardinal fair. Do you get what I'm saying? Some of y'all, because I have a Libra moon, man, so I'm not preaching or judging on anybody in this chat, but sometimes our Libra energy is fucked up and we think we're being just and we're willing to go to war and use our swords, use our words to speak some shit, but we forget they're double-edged, so we end up cutting people trying to be just, you know? So watch the fuck out for that, you know? But hey, that's a gift. So use this motherfucking gift to take responsibility for your passions or see the reality of the things that you're passionately invested into and make them make more, more motherfucking sense to the reality that we live in. So you can actually will into existence your passions. Because sometimes, you know, your Mars will burn you out and send you to Pluto and you have to go through a death and rebirth about what you're passionately invested into. And sometimes it's because y'all just don't understand Saturn. So your passion doesn't make sense or you burn yourself out through it. So this... Mars trying Saturn is going to help us see the reality of the things that we're passionately invested into right now. And that's pretty freaking sweet. But don't don't miss the transits, man. If you miss it, it's OK. You'll get new transits. But that's the fucking gift that we got right now. So we got to watch it. Yeah, your passion doesn't have to make sense. But don't be surprised whenever it doesn't manifest, dude. You're not wrong, Danica. But if we can't see it, we can't relate to it. Why the fuck would we invest in it? You know? And that's going to put you in that Pluto circumstance where you burn the fuck out through your passion and then you feel like the world owes you something and nobody wants to support you and shit like that. And then you literally got to detach, go through death and rebirth and fucking Pluto. So I don't want y'all to do that. <laughs> that's fucking sucks. I've been there and it sucks, dude. It really motherfucking sucks, bro. It's not good. So yeah, we got to make it make sense, man. Exactly. Yeah, we got to make it make fucking sense. So hey, 
We also got Venus opposite Uranus. And this is crazy. <laughs> yeah, and the planets do correspond to the chakras. It's the energy body. So Venus is flunked the fuck out, debilitated as shit in Scorpio. And Uranus is also debilitated as fuck in the Taurus constellation. So in a weird roundabout way, this is mutual reception. They're like, oh, fuck, this sucks. But hey, at least we're like together. But this is pressure. It's an opposition, man. It's 180 degrees away. Scorpio versus Taurus. This is like we need freedom through our indulgences and pleasures. So, hey, man, this is not the time to fucking throw the baby out with the bathwater. But some of y'all probably will in some way, shape or form, you know, because <laughs> it's so fucking funny. You already know how Scorpio or Venus gets in Scorpio. We're indulging with things that we're obsessed with. So sometimes Venus can overdo it, you know, and then when we got the planet Uranus, quick change, freedom, instability, individuation, unconditioning in the planet of or the sign of Taurus stability comfort not changing fixed earth that's a conflict of interest where we want to be free but it's the things that are making us stable that's making us not free you know what i'm saying so this could be like a relationship way shape or form like your person or your partner or your stability or your friend or whatever it's like the pleasures and indulgences that you get into or whatever they're into or whatever because scorpio shared resources as well y'all that's what you need to understand these are desires they could be doing something that's taking your freedom through the uranus opposition so, hey, we got to use these air planets in the sky to communicate and be motherfucking honest. And if we got to adjust boundaries, do that because Uranus doesn't want to adjust boundaries. This is literally the desire to be free in your love and pleasures. So this is the energy of like, hey, I may even just want to break up rather than having this conversation. So you got to really ask yourself with that Venus energy. Do you really value these people? And if you do, hey, you can like break up or ghost these people or cut them out of your life immediately. Maybe you just want to have some conversations and adjust these boundaries and stuff like that like having a yeah like having a bad job and keeping it because it pays bills dude that's literally what the fuck this uranus and taurus transit feels like for a lot of people this is a big ass value change in the planet in general so the thing is like we value a job because it pays our bills but again like it takes your freedom it takes your individuality uranus the uranus inside of you doesn't quite like it you know what i'm saying we're going through a massive value change on the planet right now with uranus and taurus it's the biggest wealth transfer damn near ever, you know? So sheesh, man. I do love to see it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Pretty sweet. So, hey, we also got Neptune and Pisces, semi-square, Saturn and Aquarius. So this is the challenge because it's a 45 degree angle. It's like a square where we got to learn or have some hard pressure, but it's about 45. So it's half the square, semi-square. The challenge to see the reality of our dreams, okay? And that's really like the work. That's the work that we should, I hate to say should y'all, but damn dude, if you do this, just watch how you can put yourself in a better position or find some more fulfillment in your life and your manifestations. Because the theme again, I'm gonna remind y'all, full moon in Pisces, fulfilled or unfulfilled dreams. So we can double the fuck down on the things that make us fulfilled and we can start to release those things that make us unfulfilled. And this is the thing that y'all should understand about the Virgo energy is process, self-optimization, the 80-20 rule. You know, 20% of your actions give you 80% of your results. 20% of your actions give you 80% of your problems. Just by stopping that 20% of your bullshit, you free up all this energy. And once you put that energy back into the good stuff, you're on the upward spiral. Nobody can stop you. It's pretty sweet. Y'all get me? Whew. What should you do? Pay the fuck attention to what you want to will the fuck into existence is what you should do. I don't want to tell anybody what they should do because should is energetically connected to shame and no shame on you for not taking my advice. But hey, if it sounds and feels nice, maybe you might want to pay the price and pay the fuck attention to what the fuck I'm saying. You get what I'm saying or not? <laughs> you know, <laughs> real shit. We still got to do healing. Hey, <laughs> I, I'm going to interrupt this regularly scheduled program for the inner child healing heal your damn inner child man because in some way shape or form that may have a connection to your lack of fucking fulfillment during this time period what y'all need to understand is you can't selectively numb emotions when you're traumatized or you feel guilty or ashamed of something and then you go through the venus and scorpio pleasures indulgence obsession trying to numb that fucking shit you start numbing your happiness you start numbing your joy you start numbing fulfillment you know what i'm saying we got to do the shadow work I say this every damn time, dude. We got to do the shadow work, bruh. I bet y'all didn't expect that shit 
from the full moon breakdown. Yeah, we're healing, damn it. I'm not going to let y'all wound other people. It's actually not up to me. You can wound whoever the fuck you want. But shit, man. I want y'all to be fulfilled people. I don't give a damn about your success. Because success is a natural thing through the attainment of your effort. I want y'all to be fulfilled. You'll be successful no matter what. So find some goddamn fulfillment, damn it. I fucking love every one of you so much, man. So fucking much. Damn it. <laughs> my love gets... Ugh. Got a lot of fire in my chart, man. A lot of fucking fire. Shadow work. Subconscious work. There's a lot of things that we are not consciously aware of that we need to put our attention towards. And I want y'all to kind of think about this. Saturn is an issue for a lot of us, but Saturn will give you quite literally everything you want out of your life if you can motherfucking handle it. This is the Saturn card. We need to be very hip with Saturn, our boundaries, limits, and restrictions. And I was talking to one of my friends last night. Shout out to Sophie. You're fucking amazing. But like, dude, a lot of us have fucking boundaries, you know, or no fucking boundaries. So we have all types of fucked up circumstances with our relationships, the people, places, and things. But sometimes it's our... Not the lack of boundaries, but how many boundaries we have subconsciously that actually fucks up our relationships to the world. And I'm talking about subconscious boundaries, aka you've probably been through so many circumstances of pain, frustration, um, resentment, betrayals with friends and family, close people, you know, so you get hurt. It's like your heart gets fucking hurt, dude. The moon gets beat the fuck up when people betray you, you know, so you never want to go through that shit again. So you'll, you'll create a boundary limit or restriction in the way that you carry yourself, the way that you express yourself. So quite literally, sometimes people can't even get your intimacy after you've been so traumatized, you know? Yeah, you still want to give love to people. And that's the thing, y'all. Saturn is exalted in the seventh house of relationships. So it loves to build boundaries, but sometimes it'll build too much. So we got to really like make sure we don't overbuild and block intimacy and connection with the world and we don't underbuild and make ourselves vulnerable as fuck and let people walk all over us it's a it's a balance man the seventh house in libra will tell you it's all about balance and we're going into libra season so it's time to motherfucking get ready to find some balance okay it's a challenge man it's not easy having a seventh house it's fucking hard actually i'm telling you i got a blue topaz and then i got the citrine yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, relationships are tough, man. They're not easy, but you get what you pay for, man. And sometimes it really helps to have somebody uh, reflect your spirit back to you and then help you feel related to, you know, real shit. So we'll go through the houses right quick. Um, it's pretty simple, man. I'm just asking y'all for your sake, pay attention to where you feel fulfilled or unfulfilled. Because that's the name of the game. is fulfillment for every full moon. But this is the fulfillment of your dreams. So hey, even if... I want y'all to think about... I preach this every damn day. So I get frustrated how much I have to say this. Y'all need to buy my book if you don't have it already. Because I'll break it down way better than any other hermeticist can explain it. Hit the link in my bio. And I'll get you a signed first edition. The principle of correspondence. As above, so below. Everything is energy. So quite literally... This is the time of fulfillment through the full moon, but this is also in the sign of our dreams in Pisces, Neptune, mutable water. So I don't care what the fuck you're seeing physically on this level of reality. I don't care if it's a fucked up relationship, a fucked up job, a fucked up unfulfilled marriage or whatever the fuck, dude. I don't care what it is. I want y'all to pay attention. Give your emotional esoteric currency, your water and fire to the dream so you can manifest the dream. You know what I'm saying? The universe is watching y'all. So you got to show it what you want. Because if you just sit there and pay attention to add thoughts and feelings to all types of circumstances that don't give you fulfillment, the universe is going to look at you like you like being unfulfilled. I'm going to give you more unfulfilling circumstances. We need to conjure up the feeling that we desire today and will it in. The universe be checking you out. Real shit. <laughs> it really is watching, you know. You're always being watched. And that's the beautiful thing, man. Principle of faith. It's all one energy. So we're always going to be okay. The body you live in is going to protect you. You know what I'm saying?
I'm gonna say, watch out telling me what I should do because I'm not gonna fucking listen. I won't. I'm not gonna take that shame energy. I really won't. But thank you for your concern. So, hey, if this full moon's happening in your first house, aka you're a Pisces rising, this is gonna be fulfilled or unfulfilled dreams when it comes down to your personality or your personal interests. So the thing about the first house that you need to understand is it's not just who the fuck you think you are. That is one thing, but it's the first things that you ever experienced when you got in the body. So all your personal interests are filtered through the first house as well. So as a Pisces rising, you're always, I don't want to say always, but you kind of live your life through La La Land and Neptune and Pisces and stuff like that. So, hey, it's time to just pay attention to yourself and see how you feel fulfilled or not. And it's going to tell you that you can change some things, you know, use the damn squares to Mercury to Pluto. Make some motherfucking changes. It's time for evolution. Quite literally, in with the, out with the old, in with the new. <laughs> I almost fucked it up, but yeah, that's what it is. Out with the old, in with the new. When it comes down to your personality and personal interests, with the Pisces rising, you got this full moon going through your first house. Shout out to whoever just copped the book. I love you. And if it wasn't um, an audiobook, I would sign it. I just can't sign the audiobook. Do it astrally. Real shit. So let's say that you got pisces in your second house aka you're an aquarius rising so the thing yeah i do have an audiobook quite literally dude i will like if y'all don't have the book get the book and i will literally read the book to you before you get the book that's the crazy thing so aquarius rising has pisces in the second house so this is going to be fulfilled or unfulfilled dreams when it comes down to your values possessions your money things of that nature so shit man it might be time for you to manifest some motherfucking money you know Quite literally, this is going to be a value adjustment for yourself. It's going to be you need to see yourself in a more valuable way or be more unapologetic with your value when it comes down to the people that you relate to. Because again, you're Aquarius in the first house. So your whole personality and interests, you kind of size yourself up. You are a leader. You are a free thinker, but you always keep yourself in connection to the group. You know what I'm saying? Man, do you all ever get that text from that one person and you're just like, oh, hell yeah, <laughs> dude, I'm so happy. I'm so fucking happy. I love that y'all are um, fucking with the astrology breakdown. We'll do more of these. This is so fun. I'm really loving it. And it's so simple, man. Like, I do this every single day as an astrologer. So it's just so easy, you know? I think about this from... It's so weird, y'all. I, I say this to my friends. I'm not shitting you. But by being an astrologer and me making... <laughs> it's Saturn in the 8th house vibes, I'm telling you. By me having a business centered around my desires and my passions... I do astrology sometimes from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep. Day after day after day after day. So, hey. I live this shit, man. I live this shit, man. Oh, it's crazy. In the best way. And I don't want to say crazy because that's really not the word. It's amazing. I'm going to speak that into existence. So, hey. Let's say that you're a Capricorn rising. It's going to mean you got Pisces in the third house of your chart. So this is fulfilled or unfulfilled dreams. Y'all should be seeing the theme when it comes down to your surroundings or the way that you communicate yourself as well. So this means you also got Pluto going through your first house as well. So you're making like heavy ass changes in your life, personal um, evolution. And that shit is powerful. So shit, man, it may be time to um, check the people that you associate with in your immediate environment. It is the last days of Virgo season. So what I say to all of y'all, check the habits. That's still the theme because we're about to find some peace. So be responsible in the way that you communicate yourself. Again, let's touch back on that damn um, Mercury, Chine, Jupiter. Just make sure whenever you got this full moon scenario going through your third house as a Capricorn rising that you know everything I'm wowed. I've never seen an actual astrologer speak. So if you got Capricorn, thank you. If you got Capricorn in the third house and you got this full moon scenario, or, shit, man, I'm sorry. I'm a little tipsy. Let me just, if you have... Pisces in the third house, because you're a Capricorn rising, this is going to mean you got a lot of energy. You're going to need to let some energy out to let some energy in in the way that you express yourself in that immediate environment. So again, it may not be time to preach and teach. Maybe it's time to listen and size up your immediate environment, size up the people you associate with on a day-to-day -day basis so you can know who's adding to your cup, who's fulfilling you. Because as a Capricorn rising, you probably pride yourself on being responsible and seeing the reality of damn near everything. So stay on that energy. You got Pluto going through your first house. So make sure that you are um, willing to transform your own identity in some way, shape, or form. And you'll be all right. You'll be motherfucking better than okay. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, if you got Sag rising, you're going to have Pisces going through your fourth house. So this is going to be, in some way, shape, or form, you confronting your insecurities or your securities or having 
unfulfilled or fulfilled dreams when it comes down to your family members and friends and close people that are knowing you privately in some way, shape, or form. So hey, this shit, this shit goes hard, man. It really does. Because that fourth house, that's the house that your chart sits on top of, man. This is like, <laughs> yeah, oh God, real shit, dude. But this is cool because the moon loves to be in the fourth house, y'all. That's what you need to understand is this is awesome. Nah, dude, we're going through the houses. So I'm doing this by rising sign. You didn't miss Gemini. Gemini is going to be the 10th house. 10th house Pisces, rather. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, <laughs> I've been telling y'all to do the shadow work and the inner child healing, especially these motherfuckers with sad drive. You better be doing that inner child healing. You better be checking for those insecurities. Because the thing is, when it comes down to your dreams in the fourth house, it's probably insecurity, shame, and justified resentment and guilt that's holding you the fuck back from that shit. Okay? AKA, you need to jump in your Sag rising energy and get that mutable fire. Learn how to see yourself a different way. You know what I'm saying? If you don't know your rising sign, you're going to page of cups. Real shit. That's right. Aunt Gooch. Yo, I'm making you a mod, Aunt Gooch. I'm fucking with you, man. Yeah. Much love. Real shit. How do you know what sign your rising is in? If you go to the link in my bio and hit the first thing in my link tree, you can get a free natal chart. And it's going to be the sign on the left of your chart, the eastern horizon. So, hey, now we got fifth house, Pisces. So this is going to be Scorpio rising, okay? So it's going to be fulfilled or unfulfilled dreams when it comes down to your pleasures, indulgence, or creativity. So the thing is, as a Scorpio rising man... You got Pisces in the fifth house, so you probably do a little bit too much when it comes down to this energy anyway. You know, you just being kind of like in Neptune when it comes down to your love and pleasure. So that's pretty cool. You know, that's where Pisces is at. But again, we got to make it make sense because you also got Venus going through your first house, Venus and Scorpio. So the thing is, you may be over willing to indulge in the stuff that you have fun with, the fifth house stuff. So you got to make it make sense, dude. And in some way, shape or form, this is that Pluto energy. Even though, here's the thing about Pluto, y'all. This is the higher Mars. Mars is what you want to do. It's your desires, your intentions, your passions. It's the lower octave of Pluto. So Pluto, Pluto's the higher Mars. So when you tune into Pluto, it's going to be the same connection of your root chakra, your instincts of survival and desire. Sometimes it's unconscious. So the thing is like, when you're making these changes in your fifth house of your habits and looking at the fixed water constellation, this is going to be the energy of your body wants to do something, aka addiction or obsession or fixed water, but your mind in your Pluto, your crown chakra is like, hey, it's going to be better for us to do this instead. Put our development over our desires. Mars is going to say, fuck no, dude. Mars wants desires over development. Pluto wants development over desires. Y'all don't fucking forget about it, okay? Real shit for you Scorpio risings, because right now this full moon scenario is going to happen in your fifth house of fun, enjoyment, and creativity. The shit that you do for fun. The shit that you're already willing to compromise with, you know? Let's say it's freaky things. You already know how the Scorpio Risings get down. It's freaky things. So, hey, <laughs> let's talk about the Libra Risings. Because y'all got Pisces in the sixth motherfucking house of your chart. So, this is fulfilled or unfulfilled dreams when it comes down to your work, your schedule, your routine, or your motherfucking health. You didn't miss Virgo Rising. This is next. And that's mine, too. So, shit, man. You already know. It goes in order, so that's going to be our seventh house. But hey, if you got a Libra rising, that means we want to add some more fulfillment in our day-to-day -day routine, our schedule, and our job. Again, 80-20 rule. This is the house that Virgo rules, a.k.a. pay attention on the mutable earth element to the things in the process of the detail of what you're doing every single day. Brooke in the house. Yeah. Shout out to the Libra risings. Fuck yeah, dude. So it's like we really just want to reverse engineer our process as a Libra rising during this full moon scenario. Because when you go throughout your day and just take an inventory of the time you're spending, some things are going to be more fulfilling. Some things are going to piss you the fuck off. So by getting organized, using the last of this um, Virgo sun energy, we can find a lot more peace when we go into Libra season. You know, pretty sweet. So getting organized, you know, it's like you don't get to um, enjoy everything throughout the day. But maybe if you start putting your things that you don't like to do, that you dread throughout the day first and get them done in 10 minutes you'll have so much more mental space to go and have fun throughout the rest of your work in your sixth house routine and you'll feel healthier too just because your mind will be less cluttered your body will be less cluttered you'll be feeling way fucking better as a libra rising so hey this is for the virgo ascendants so this is me and a lot of y'all shout out to all y'all virgo ascendants that are ruled by chiron so this full moon scenario is going to be happening in your seventh house 
So this is fulfilled or unfulfilled relationships. And man, man, I'm so fucking happy. Y'all have been hearing me like damn near every time I jump on here. I'm so, I've been trying to make sure I don't have any rose colored glasses on, man. They're not on right now, bro. I'm just in love. So fulfilled or unfulfilled dreams when it comes down to your relationships, man. This could be people, places, and things, not just romance. It could be platonic people or open enemies. The seventh house is every time you look at a person on an equal level. So we have a seventh house relationship, y'all. For real. So, hey, <laughs> if you're a Virgo rising, this is Pisces in your seventh house. So you've already had kind of issues when it comes down to love by rocking yourself to sleep and jumping off Niagara Falls into Neptune's water because... You're willing to take on so much suffering and sacrifice for your partners. It's unreal, man. It's unfucking real. You know, if you're a Virgo rising, the only way you relate to anybody is through Pisces, man. Through your imagination and dreams. So again, you want to add a little bit of Saturn because you can't get to Neptune before Saturn. You want to add some Saturn, some reality, some responsibility to the shit that you're doing. It has to make sense, man. Or else we're going to have some motherfucking issues. And shout out to Nicole for copping the hat. I appreciate it. That's so sweet, man. So yeah, we just want to look at the reality of our relationships as a Virgo rising and just make sure they make sense. If they're adding to your cup, they're filling you up. Shit, you can keep on doing it. And again, dude, kind of the theme for all of these things is just use that 80-20 rule. Use common sense. Use that Virgo action, Virgo sun, because we're all going through it to put yourself in a better routine and schedule when it comes down to these things in your life. You know, make it make sense, Virgo risings. Because the thing is, bro, Virgo risings, I said this before in this live, Virgo is one of the most spiritual signs that we got especially virgo risings because the way virgo rising relates to the whole world the seventh house is through pisces they're trying to find the jupiterian principles and meaning behind everything and sometimes it's not that fucking deep sometimes you got to tell virgo risings to make it make fucking sense get it together come back down to earth but sometimes it's way deeper than any of y'all understand because the virgo rising see some shit they see behind the scenes man pisces seventh house so just check your relationships and like really the thing is man i could fucking this is my life bro this is my placement right now so just the energy of like when it comes down to your relationships you want to make sure that you and your friends partners or lovers are motherfucking um aligned on oh man i'm getting yeah it's my seventh house getting those texts bro and i'm just like oh fuck <laughs> derailed you want to make <laughs> yeah fuck dude i need to mute my phone or something but um you want to make sure you're aligned on virtues, principles, actions, ideas. Your willpower should be the same way for anybody, seventh house, man, or else you might just be pulling separate ways. But especially Virgo rising, you probably experience this quite a bit. So just watch out for that. So let's get down to the um, Leo risings because you got Pisces in your eighth house. So this is going to be, fuck, dude, fulfilled or unfulfilled desires, you know, because this is the eighth house of desires, connections with other people, shared resources, investments in some way, shape or form, you know. So again, you better apply some fucking Saturn, some reality, because you also got Saturn going through your seventh house. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So you better make it make fucking sense also, not just the Virgo risings. Damn near everybody has to, man. Dude, we got six retrogrades in the sky. We're about to have another one, dude. This is a reality check for most of us, you know? We got to pay the fuck attention to what's going on right in front of us, man. It's wild. Yeah. How often do I meditate every day? every day every day and if i don't i feel some way and i'm just like shit man <laughs> you know so hey as a leo rising you just want to make sure your desires make motherfucking sense because if they're not fulfilling you either you're going for it in a wrong way or your desire just doesn't make sense to the world seventh house saturn you get what i'm saying so shit man the fastest way i've been telling y'all the fastest way to get on pluto is through your motherfucking mars mars rules the eighth house so again, dude, if you like aren't, if you're, if your willpower, your Mars is not align with the will of the universe, sometimes we're not going to let you manifest what the fuck you think you want. And then you might feel like a victim of circumstance or the world's out to get you. And in a weird roundabout way, if that happens, you're out to get the world because again, you didn't make your desires make sense on Saturn on reality time, you know, real shit. Just got to make it make sense, man. And this is also your relationships, your seventh house Aquarius. So it's like Leo rising specifically. Y'all need to watch the people you're around coming up and watch how you, because you're a person too, watch how you relate to these people because you could be the one that's fucked up, you know, and having your desires on demon time. You get me? So watch the fuck out, man. So we got cancer risings next, and this is ninth house Pisces. 
as a Cancer rising, y'all are sensitive, moody, pretty sweet, loving, and generous. But you got your ninth house Pisces. So the thing is, you base your understanding and your belief systems and your principles on imagination and fantasy and illusion sometimes. So the thing is, um, this goes without saying on a full moon. You know, you really got to make sure that your understanding of the world makes motherfucking sense, dude. You know? Because you try to find deeper meanings behind everything, you know, with Pisces in the ninth house. So this is time for you to confront limiting beliefs as a Cancer rising, you know, because some of your belief systems aren't going to make you fulfilled. Some of them are. So it's time for you to go check the things that you think you know as a Cancer rising come this full moon and figure out where you feel light, where you feel dense and all the things that you think, you know, unlearn, relearn is the name of the game for Cancer rising, you know. And the same thing for Aries rising too, but we're about to get to that in a second, you know, because it's the ninth Jupiter, understanding the wisdom and knowledge of your experiences, you know, so you go about things in a very deep way as a cancer rising in general, you know, I did do Capricorn rising. So this is fulfillment or unfulfillment when it comes down to your immediate environment, and how you communicate yourself. So you also have Pluto going through your first house as a Capricorn rising. So you want to make sure that you're willing to transform yourself and maybe hold back on expressing yourself a little bit. Just because um, you don't want to be expressing the ways in which you're unfulfilled or the ways in which you need to transform and have other people in your first house, people that know you personally, tell you what the fuck you need to do. You get what I'm saying? So watch the fuck out as a Capricorn rising. So Cancer rising, just watch out for the limited beliefs. You don't want to be rocking yourself to sleep just based on you thinking you know everything based on what you've experienced. Because if you knew everything, you wouldn't have to be here. You know, real shit. So if you're a Gemini rising, you got... Pisces in the 10th house. So this is fulfilled or unfulfilled dreams when it comes down to your goals, your career, your schedule, your business, your calling, your reputation, your fame. So this is going to be the goals you set for yourself. You may need to literally like reinvent your goals because this is both mutable energies, man. These are the angular houses, right? So the thing is like, make it make sense. <sighs> if you got Taurus in the 12th house as a Gemini rising, you need to set your goals no higher than your foundation to achieve them, period, you know? And you're going to see this, especially when it comes down to this full moon scenario, when you're setting things that literally can't manifest because you keep feeling unfulfilled in these circumstances, you know, reinvent the goals, reinvent the goals. I did do Scorpio rising. So right quick, my friend, you got Pisces in your fifth house. So this is going to be you needing to change your pleasures and indulgences in some way, shape or form, find more fulfillment through those. And find the ways in which that you are unfulfilled in the things that you wish to indulge in. Because you have Venus going through your first house. Meaning <laughs> it's some shit that you do personally that needs to give. You know. In some way, shape, or form. Because you're... the thing about Scorpio. This is a Pluto ruled sign. If you're Scorpio. If you're Scorpio rising, you're ruled by Pluto. So fixed water either wants to evolve emotions or disconnect from them entirely. Right? You really only have um, a couple options. So. Again, this is evolution is what I'm telling you about with Scorpio rising. I broke this down. Some of y'all might have just got here, but our Mars is our desires to do things, our instincts. And then Scorpio and Pluto is us taking the Mars chakra to the highest octave and saying, even though I feel like I need to do this, my body says this, my mind, my crown, my spirit says, let me not do that. Let me do something better. So we discipline our desires rather than suppress them. Suppression is going to make you blow up and that's a Pluto eruption, you know, so don't fucking do that. So Gemini rising, reinvent your goals or set new goals, really tune into that feeling of fulfillment because this is a goddamn, um, powerful time for a Gemini rising, having the full moon going through your 10th house. This is the energy of dude, whatever you're paying attention to and adding fantasy and illusion towards will add more weight and be closer to manifesting. But again, you want to check the energy you're putting into it. Cause if you're adding unfulfilled energy to the goal, it's going to bring that thing further from you. If you're adding the energy of fulfillment to your goals and the plans and the things that you wish to do, 10th house energy, you're going to bring those closer to you. You're going to will them in. Simple. Discipline your desires. Yeah, don't suppress your desires. Put your development over your desires. Mars is going to say put desire over development. Pluto is going to say, yo, especially Pluto and Capricorn right now, put the motherfucking development over the desires. Okay? So this is Taurus rising. You got Pisces in the 11th house, man. And this is pretty sweet, man. This is like unfulfilled or fulfilled wishes and dreams and the people that you associate yourself with as well. Groups, organizations, pretty sweet. So, hey, man, <laughs> you probably got 
I'm not going to say probably based on degree, house division or whatever, you got Uranus going through the first house too. So you're making a lot of personal changes already as a Taurus rising. And that's pretty sweet, man. The name of the game for Taurus risings right now is finding their motherfucking freedom with Uranus transiting the first house. So having this full moon scenario in the 11th house of wishes and dreams, it's your motherfucking time to shine, Taurus rising. Really sweet, you know? So again, add more imagination, add more fulfillment to the things that you wish to desire. Because the thing is, the 11th house is Uranus energy. So this is like a really powerful time for Taurus rising as well, man. Having, and this, I said this with the last sign, when you got these full moons going through the upper left quadrant of your chart, pay the fuck attention, y'all. Pay the fuck attention. Pay the fuck attention, man. <laughs> Pay attention to what you're paying attention to, man, because the universe will give you what you pay for. And sometimes it's bullshit. So don't pay for any fucking bullshit. You get me? You may have to fucking heal that inner child. Shit, man. Damn. <laughs> Y'all already know what the fuck this is about. I don't even have to say it. You know, do the healing and feel your feelings. Damn it. Because this is Pisces moon going through the 11th house. Everything the goddamn you want to do, all your the energy of fulfillment is the 11th house is going to show you where you're fulfilled or not fulfilled. That's what the 11th house is. So shit, man. Yeah, your money is your energy. It's your currency, you know, real shit. So hey, man, it's six retrogrades for everybody. I don't give a damn where this full moon falls in your chart. We still got six retrogrades. So it's time to really check your feelings. Do your healing. Do the shadow work. Because man, if you avoid the shadow work, don't be surprised when you don't feel good. It's the time right now, <laughs> you know. I'm not surprised a damn bit. When people say they don't feel good, when they run from their feelings and try to suppress and numb. I've been telling y'all, on this energy, you can't selectively numb your feelings. If you feel trauma, pain, resentments toward yourself or other people, guilt, shame, and you try to smoke it away or drink it away or 7th or 8th house it away, 5th house it away, you get what I'm saying? You'll start numbing the pain, but you'll start numbing the, the joy. You'll start numbing the pleasure. You'll start numbing the fulfillment. Your emotions, your water, is your connection, my friend. So whenever you stop feeling your feelings, you lose your connection to yourself. And it's not a surprise that you feel disconnected from the world. I've been telling you all to feel your motherfucking feelings, bro. I don't care how bad they feel. I'm going to send you hugs mentally as you cry about it, man. This is the death and rebirth scenarios we got to go through, man. The death card, bro. Cry it the fuck out, dude. And the thing is, man, with this moon about all the heart chakra filling up with light, it's time to let this shit go, man. All of us have childhood trauma. You need to understand that, man. There's 93 people in here. We all got childhood trauma. I don't care if you had a... That's right. Send love to everybody here, man. Because we're a fucking family, bro. Even if you had the best childhood, you had all your physical needs met, your emotional needs met, your mental needs met, your financial needs met, you're still going to end up traumatized based on the way that you perceive the universe. This universe is evolving. You know? It's important to venerate our ancestors, but like... I say this as kind of a joke just to take this thing out of this really hard conversation. Our ancestors are kind of dumb as fuck, man. If they knew better, they would do better. That's why the fuck we're here is we got to learn and evolve, you know? So we got to forgive our parents. We got to forgive and let go of justified resentment. There's no such thing as justified resentment and guilt, man. I'm telling you. There's such thing as guilt, but there's no such thing as justified resentment. Justified resentment doesn't exist. So we got to let that shit go, man. This card, for a lot of people, yeah, the ancestors are going to point you out, man. They'll guide you in spirit. And you goddamn right, dude. They're going to show you what the fuck needs to happen, man. Because you all are aligned on the journey. So you can't selectively numb your feelings. Some people take this as ungrateful with the Four of Cups because it's like, mm. and in some way, shape, or form, that's kind of the energy that it is. But it's solid emotions. Four of Cups. It's taking our emotions and making them square to protect ourselves. Like I was telling y'all with the Saturn in the seventh house, having boundaries to the world outside of us, that's exalted. So we need to have boundaries so the world doesn't damage us, but we don't need so many boundaries that we can't connect to the world. That's the challenge, man. Exalted planets can do too much, man. And we got to forgive our parents. So yeah, we're about to get to it, man. 12th house, Pisces means you're an Aries rising. And this is like the best place to have a full moon in Pisces is for an Aries rising. So holy shit, man. Y'all Aries Risings, you're leaders to begin with. So make sure you're using your magic and leading yourself and really tuning into your cardinal fire, aka your vision. So the thing is, this is going to be quite literally fulfilled or unfulfilled dreams because it's in the house of dreams. You get what I'm saying? The whole theme, this is your time to shine as an Aries Rising. Hell the fuck yeah. Get excited, man. 
So again, your 12th house being your unconscious, your dreams, your nightmares, your illusions or fantasies, it is time for you to do shadow work as well. But the thing is, you got the gift as the Aries rising with having the moon going through this house. So you'll be able to feel in your body the shadow work that needs to be done, which is pretty sweet. What do you think about closure and shadow work? Is closure necessary to heal? In some way, shape, or form, yeah. Because um, enclosure can mean different things to other people. Like, I think um, the first one... Oh, that's so sweet. I saw Melissa um, almost added me. I'll have to text her. But I was, like, in the middle of saying something. I fucking love Melissa, dude. Melissa's amazing. If y'all don't... what's I think it's Melissa Crowley. Y'all should fucking check her out, man. She's the bee's fucking knees, dude. Yeah. And her chart, bro, is so funny. I digress. But I was reading... I didn't know Melissa was popping on TikTok. She's, like, pretty famous. She's got a lot of people on her on her page, man. But um, when I, I didn't know her personally. And whenever I read her chart, I was like, dude... Before I even start the chart, I'm like, girl, your chart, witchcraft. It's fucking witchcraft, man. Yeah. <laughs> Melissa's straight magic, man. I'm telling you, dude. Melissa's the real fucking deal, dude. And it's so cool to read somebody's chart and then afterwards get to meet them and be like, oh, damn. <laughs> you're really, you're really real, you know? Yeah, Mystic Melissa Rose. Follow and tap in, man. She's amazing. So dope. So, yeah, man. Aries rising, you got a pretty big gift um, when it comes down to this full moon in a couple days. Yeah. Pretty sweet, man. That's so cool that y'all came from her. That's so sweet, man. I'm getting more into the lives, man, and trying to get more with the community. So I didn't mean to reject her or whatever, but I'm going to hop off pretty soon, actually. There is a list. Um, I literally uh, just broke down all of them. So what I'm probably going to do, y'all, is upload this to YouTube just so we can... Um, you can rewatch it because we still got a couple days before this full moon. So y'all can tap in on my YouTube. Uh, it's on my profile. If you hit the Instagram button, it's going to show you. So, yeah. Usually I am down to do divination and cards and stuff. But because this is going to be a YouTube video, I'm not going to do all that extra shit right now. But hey, y'all. I just opened up the natal chart readings again on my website, simplifiedastrology.com. You can go to the link in my bio to book a chart reading. I set a limit just because I'm not trying to get overbooked and have y'all wait this time longer than you need to. So I think there's like about 15 spots. So if you want it, check it out. If not, no worries. I still have signed first editions too of my book, Simplified Astrology. If y'all were kind of lost during the live, I got the astrological guide and I'll sign it for you. So check it out. I love you guys. I hope you're doing amazing. Follow the YouTube because I'm going to post the replay, okay? I love y'all. I hope you had a really good time. I had a good time. It was a lot of fun vibing with y'all. And we're going to do it more often, you know. We got shit tons of lunar cycles coming, man. Hell yeah. You're very welcome, Taylor. Full moon is coming, y'all, two days. So we got some time to clear out the emotions. I would love to read y'all's chart. Just tap in. SimplifiedAstrology.com. Y'all are amazing, and thank you for the love. I'm going to send it back to y'all. I'm tapping the screen, too. Damn right. It's a lot of love, man. And it's so cool to have a community, man. That's the fucking point of the age of Aquarius, damn it. Real shit. So yeah, feel your feelings, do your healing, full moon, fulfillment. Fulfilled dreams is the name of the game. So that's what we're going to will into existence, okay? I love y'all. You have a beautiful night, and I will see you guys somewhat soon, okay? Have a good one.